so I'm using this big biscuit cutter set uh, and some scrap clay for the base so the first thing is to build the base of the box and for that I'm cutting a strip that I'm going to wrap around the um, uh, biggest of the biscuit uh, cutters in the set and then all you have to do is to make sure that um, number one you do not trap air because that is uh, really really bad uh, smooth your seam and then all you have to do is to trim the base so it would be perfectly level and then also trim the top of the box and that is fairly easy to do if you use your um, rigid blade and you follow the top edge of the cutter it is a little bit hard for me to keep the um, image in the camera field because the cutter is so huge so i don't have a lot of room and it's impossible to remove those uh, handles which in a way it's a good thing because you can move it around but anyway after you bake it and you let it cool uh, we will cover it but in the meantime uh, let's make what to cover it with and this is how we are going to make the faux burl wood so two parts gold half part alizarin crimson and a quarter part ultramarine you get it through the pasta machine until you get the mica sheen and then get it through the thinnest setting possible and just make these little crumbs that you then put together you smash them together real good avoid rolling too much because that's when you'll destroy the whole mica shift effect that creates the burl wood for burl wood effect so try to practically press them you see i'm using my acrylic block and then in order to create a sheet um, it will be necessary to cut that block i reduced it so it would be the size of the um, base and then i'm just cutting slices because the sides will have the mica shift destroyed so you need what's inside and just put them together and I will show you one more time how to do all this without destroying uh, the mica shift that's inside. So just put them together like this and then gently roll over them. Not too much directly on them. Uh, for the side it's okay to go like this. But um, I will show you another way to preserve all that mica shift effect then uh, place bacon bond on the outside and on the inside remember that strip we cut that has to be about one centimeter place it on the inside of the cutter that will be the part of the lid that will get in the box to fix the lid in place and then trim it nicely so it would be all an even strip And after that, uh, smear well the bacon bond and then place the um, full burl wood veneer. And again, I apologize for not being able to keep it very good in the camera field, but as I said, it's because of the size of the cutter. I decided to make a fairly big box. And I will put a link in the description where you can get these cutters, of course, from Trish but she has the best price for them and uh, once you uh, place the veneer in place again very careful about air bubbles you do not want any kind of air trapped in there then you simply trim the bottom all you have to do about the bottom is to trim it even it's on the top that you have to be careful and uh, fold the veneer over the edge over the top edge of the base clay 
and then trim it nicely that is very important because you want your uh, box to look pretty you don't want the base clay to show there you see I'm using my exacto knife to do the trimming and then uh, I also used my uh, paintbrush handle to make sure that that veneer is well set in place over the the top edge of the um, box base and um, after you bake it I advise you before you take it from uh, the blank to sand it on the blank because it's much easier to hold it and then you can do a first buff on it if you want but uh, generally speaking sand it before you take it off the blank it will be so much easier you'll only have the top edge to sand separately now um, while that is baking let's do um, if you want to do an inlay and I'll show you how you can do just a stripe inlay but I have there a little square of a faux abalone stack and a little, not square, cube, and a little cube of black clay. If you are not one of my sponsors and you don't know uh, the abalone, which I will put in the um, store soon, you can use the mother of pearl because that's one of my free tutorials. Or you can use, you know, just turquoise clay uh, so it would look like turquoise inlay but I prefer to use this one I thought it would give it more character more ethnic character on the burl wood for burl wood and you saw I just cut the cubes on a diagonal and I swapped and then I put them together and I reduced them and for the moment I will leave them to the side until I need them because it will be um, pretty much like a micro caning slice and this is what we get and now my um, the side of the box is all baked and sanded and buffed and now I will start working on um, the bottom so get another sheet of uh, scrap clay on the thickest setting and then place uh, the sides of the box on it and then cut out following the inner circle because you want your box to have a very sturdy bottom so it would not fall apart And then uh, place bacon bond at the very edge of the bottom of the sides of the box. And then fit, you'll have two bottoms. This is the first bottom. This is the bottom that goes inside. So fit that circle that you cut out, fit it to go inside the box inside the the walls of the box and then uh, I will place with a paintbrush some liquid clay in the very corners and then I will make these very 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 thin uh, strings of clay that I am placing also there and then I'll use some alcohol with a paintbrush to uh, seal them perfectly in place and the alcohol you know dissolves polymer clay so you will not even see strings anymore now while that is baking let's talk about the lid you will need uh, something fairly spherical and again another sheet of uh, thickest setting of uh, scrap clay and then use the cutter that you used for the walls of the box 
you will not be able to cut perfectly through but you will leave the outline that you can use as a reference to um, cut along with your exacto knife and here it's very important that the edges are perfectly vertical now while that is baking um, and the box itself cooled off let's put on the second button so place bacon bond on the first button and then do another sheet uh, this time on the third thickest setting and place it on top of the first button again very careful to not trap any air in there and then um, do a rough trim first After which use your roller to gently create a, um, a little bit of a bevel and that will also help uh, getting rid of the excess raw clay. And then you see I'm using alcohol again to smooth and make sure that you wipe the sides real good now we need to cover that bottom with veneer so I made another little stack of little crumbs of my uh, gold, alizarin, crimson and ultramarine mix and uh, again you need to, to cut it because you need what is inside don't use the outside and just uh, cut slices and kind of puzzle them together like a jigsaw puzzle and this is where I'm going to show you how to uh, do this a veneer so you get a veneer that is perfectly even and would look like the uh, burr wood without messing up the mica shift effect you see how i'm slightly overlapping it i'm pressing it together and then i'm using a wax paper so the roller will not roll straight on the clay because the roller rolling on the clay is going to destroy the mica shift effect and I'm only using the roller on the back the front what you see now was on the uh, tile and uh, here I don't need bacon bond anymore because obviously it's raw clay on raw clay so um, it will stick with no problems I had a little spot there that seemed to miss a crumb. Again, very careful about not trapping air pockets. Very, very, very important. And the beauty with this uh, veneer is that all those scraps that you cut, you just put them back through the pasta machine until you get a mica sheen and then you make more veneer. It's nothing lost. use the roller very very softly again so you don't destroy the mica shift effect and then use alcohol to smooth the edges and I baked this on a wad of um, a paper towel upside down and again sand and buff the bottom now let's make I'll show you how to make the um, slice for the cane if you want to do this type of embellishment 
If not, you can put just lines and I'll show you how to do the line. So just reduce until you can just put them together. And then using the acrylic brock, bring everything to the same width. And that's when you can cut the slices perfectly. Now we need a strip of veneer for the lid. And again, you see, I'm using the wax paper on the back of what I'm going to use. The front of what I'm going to use is always facing the tile. Now put some bacon bond on the edges of your domed lid. and place the veneer. You'll have to convince it a little bit, but it's fine. You can curve it and then gently tapping it in place, it will make it sit perfectly without wrinkles, without anything. Just gently tap it in place until it uh, finds the proper shape. And um, once you placed all of it and you smooth nicely the seams, you trim the very edge Again, notice how my edges are perfectly vertical compared to the bowl I'm baking on. And then uh, use another one of the biscuit cutters to cut a perfect circle in inside. So you'll have a, an even line of veneer around the edge. Of course, you cannot really cut it with a cutter, but you'll get your uh, outline that you can afterwards cut out with the X-Acto knife. And then you place a line or you can place a slice of cane or two slices continuously. And, but you can place just a line or several lines. You make a sandwich of... Um, one part gold and half part white on the thickest setting sandwiched between two sheets of black on the thinnest setting and then run it again through the pasta machine on the thickest setting to create that type of line and um, i'm sorry but for some reason my software malfunctioned when i was putting these on but it's not difficult you just follow the inner uh, line of the circle now you want to bake this first before going to the next uh, before putting in the um, the middle circle you want to bake it first because otherwise it's going to be relatively difficult to place the circle perfectly if the rest is raw so I have this all baked and actually I sanded it a little bit and got rid of all unevenness. Then I'm placing bacon bond, after which I place the piece of veneer and I gently tap it in place and I will be able to see the outline of the circle. And that way I'll be able to uh, cut it so it can fit perfectly. And of course, smoothing it out might bring it again over a little bit and you can just do the finesse trimming. And that way you'll have an absolutely perfect design on your lid. And smooth with alcohol once again. I'm doing a lot of smoothing with alcohol on this one because it has to be all nice and 
and shiny. And uh, as I said, you can smooth out by sanding um, any of those uh, little imperfections. Now it's time to uh, put a lip on the lid because right now it would be exactly the same dimension as the walls of the box. And we want it to be just a little bit wider. So I am cutting about one centimeter strip again on the thicker setting and then placing bacon bond on the very edges. And you see I'm cutting about even less than a centimeter but uh, you can cut it a little bit wider because you will uh, fix the width after you put it around the domed part of the lid. And just uh, set it around the lid and make sure that you push it well against the edge that has the bacon bond. And join the edges. And what I'm doing right now is just making sure that it's well against the, the edge. Then you can use your roller to once again make sure that it is well set in place. After which you use your rigid blade and you follow the, how can I call it, the incline of the dome to trim that lip perfectly it will need not be absolutely perfectly following the dome because it's got a little bit of an angle at the joining point between the lip and the dome but that's going to just add to um, the prettiness of the lid but uh, this is how you make it look nice and even you just follow the the edge of the dome when you're cutting lean your blade against the the edge of the domed lid and just trim that lip and then smooth it well with your fingers while that is baking let's do the inside of the box itself now here I am using actually uh, regular acrylics, dark patina, peridot, and then I'm using the extreme sheen pearl. But in order to obtain this type of metallic brocade effect, you need two colors of which one should be a metallic that are very close to each other. Like you see I'm using the dark patina and the peridot. Um, you can use two hues of blue, two hues of red even. And then for the third one, we use something that would be either silverish or goldish. And you see, I'm just tapping. I just load the paintbrush and I'm just tapping in place. And then I will do again the same tapping to do a little bit more mixing with my finger. And that will give it that beautiful marbled effect. Let it dry and then um, I would suggest you use some PYM or Renaissance wax on the acrylic area because it's not really worth it to put it back in the oven. Now let's cover the lip with the veneer. So place again a bacon bond and then create another thin veneer. 
So the veneer, when I'm creating it, it would be about one and a half playing cards thick. So not really the thinnest, thinnest, thinnest setting on your pasta machine, but maybe like the second or the third, depending on your machine. You don't need a lot of width on this uh, veneer, obviously, it's only a few millimeters there. So just start placing it against the edge. You don't really have to be perfect because you can always trim any excess. But once again, careful about not trapping air. And then you can fix the, uh, the, uh, the seam there, both with your fingers and with a helper like a paintbrush handle. Just push the veneer against the edge of the domed part of the lid. Of course you can do this box with any kind of veneer. I just thought that um, it would look good in burl wood type and besides I know some of you have asked me for a long time to do a full burl wood. And also, um, just as a suggestion, this is the result of a quiz on my Facebook page and I do a lot of times quizzes about the subject of the next tutorial on YouTube. So don't forget to follow my Facebook page if you want to have a say in the what I'm going to show you next. So you saw I trimmed and I'm using alcohol to um, blend and smooth and then I will do another pre-bake. I like, I know it's so many bakes, but I like to make sure that nothing gets messed up. That's why I don't want to go all in one. I'd rather go slow, steady and pretty. This is more of a pre-bake than a real bake. Now it's time to put that strip that we baked in the very beginning. And see, I sanded and I buffed it and it looks so pretty. So for this, we'll get another piece of um, scrap clay on the thickest setting and cut about two millimeters of it. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise because you're going to trim it out. And then place bacon bond at the edge of the dome. And then on the edge of that uh, ring that you have created. And you will place first on the lid, you will place that strip of scrap clay. Placing uh, the baked uh, ring on the baked lid would not ensure enough stability and adherence. That's why I am placing also some raw clay because that always helps things adhere better. And then push the ring against the strip of raw clay. And once you have it all set in place, then you can use your exacto knife to trim the excess clay that shows on both sides of the ring. And I would suggest before you start trimming, number one, check if it fits the box. 
because it might need an, a little bit of manipulation there the ring is a little bit flexible at this point so you can change its shape slightly to be sure that it fits in the uh, it fits in the box and now it's time to do the same decoration on the inside of the lid and I'm using the exact same colors and the exact same technique first the dark patina and then the peridot and then the extreme sheen pearl and I'm placing that with the paintbrush after which I'm going to tap it with my finger and then let it dry and then seal it and there you go that's a pretty jewelry box with ethnic motifs I hope you will enjoy making it happy claim